Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of Coming Distractions brought to you by the Nerdpocalypse Podcast. I'm your host, Jay. Okay, guys, we're back. Uh, this episode, I'm going to talk about the newly released film, The Mauritanian. Uh, I'll read you the logline um, sort of summary of this film. Um, captured by the U.S. government, uh, Mohamedou Slahi languishes in prison for years without a charge or trial. Losing all hope, Salahi finds allies in defense secretary or defense attorney Nancy Hollander, played by Jodie Foster, and her associate uh, Terry Duncan, played by uh, Shailen Woodley. Together, they face countless obstacles to um, in a desperate pursuit for justice. Um, their controversial advocacy, along with evidence uncovered by a formidable military prosecutor, Lieutenant Colonel Stuart Couch, played by Benedict Cumberbatch, uh, eventually reveals a shocking and far-reaching conspiracy based on the New York Times bestselling memoir, uh, The Guantanamo Diaries. Um, this is starring uh, Tahir Rahem as uh, Mohamedou uh, Slahi. So for folks who don't know, this is, a, this is a true story. This is actually to basically – do a better summary than that. Um, this is a guy who ended up spending uh, countless years in Guantanamo Bay because he was accused of being in, you know, in cahoots with Osama bin Laden for and and sort of recruiting uh, people for 9-11. Um, turns out dude was totally innocent, incidentally, um, to spoil reality for you. But um, he spent 14 years and two months in um, Gitmo. And um, this is sort of his story about when when he gets picked up, when he is there, and they like they reenact this brutal torture that happens to him. And meanwhile, he's working with his two lawyers, Jodie Foster and Shane Woodley, um, um, to sort of prove his innocence that they don't they basically don't have any evidence to to hold him, and that they don't charge him in those fourteen years, which is equally as crazy. But the larger issue here is the movie deals with sort of what is right on paper and what is considered morally correct. Um, and Benedict Cumberbatch plays uh, Lieutenant Colonel Stuart Couch that I mentioned earlier. Um, and he is this Lieutenant Colonel who has a direct connection to 9-11, meaning like his best friend was on the plane that hit the South Tower. So he has this like deep seated need to like really go after these guys. And he's put on the case basically because of that. Um, meanwhile, you have Jodie Foster who is just sort of fighting against the government just because she's fighting for the rule of law, like charge the guy with something or let him go. And it's this, again, it's this sort of moral back and forth. Like, is this guy, you know, if this guy is guilty, do you do everything no matter what the rules are to get him um, and to keep him there? Um, and to possibly execute him. Um, is that the right thing to do? And do you sort of, how do you balance that through the moral ideas of, you know, torture and things like that? Um, it's very good. I, I have to say it was very good. I mean, it's, it's never a fun, easy watch to, to watch things about torture and 9-11 and things like that. But everybody here does, uh, pretty good performances. Um, it's a little weird having Benedict Cumberbatch do an American Southern accent. It's, it's a little strange. Um, but he kind of, he kind of pulls it off for the most part. It's a little odd, but, um, he has a couple of moments where he's sort of, his character is grappling with, um, sort of the, the moral conundrum, um, that, uh, uh, Lieutenant Colonel Couch dealt with in reality. And that is, that is played for like pretty serious and and it, it does make you think like, how would you be in those moments? Like, could you ignore the things that you're reading um, that are really horrendous in order to try to get back at some people who you think might be involved, who helped kill thousands of people, let alone um, killed your best friend. So it's, it's an interesting moral pull. And as you're watching it, as things go, I found myself having like, a certain view in the beginning and that view changing significantly by the end. So I, I think as a, as a piece of art that says a lot. So if you are into these sort of stories and you, you really want to find out sort of more of the detail and background of how the Guantanamo diaries book came to be and you know what that meant for that guy and what he went through. Um, it's, it's a, it's a pretty harrowing tale. Um, 
And you know, this guy's still alive. He's 50 years old now. He lives in um, – he's back in Mauritania um, and he has a hell of a story to tell. And it's it's amazing how much we as like the American public don't really know about what went on there or like – the ideas of what we think went on and is everybody there a bad guy or did they get people there that were, you know, wrongly pulled? You know, who knows, right? So this is one of those um, instances of a guy who was um, pulled into this and spent a considerable amount of his life and he was innocent. Um, so, yeah, it, it it should change your perspective if you have sort of a hardline perspective on everyone at Guantanamo. It should change your perspective a little bit and maybe give you – some level of indication that everything isn't so black and white. So I would say bravo to the to the folks who worked on this movie because it does it does sort of change you uh, as you're watching it. So again, performances are good. The script is good. Um, uh, Tahar Rahim as uh, uh, Muhammadu Slahi was very good. Like you believed him. He had sort of because he he was raised in Mauritania, but then he goes to Germany. As a young man, because, you know, he's quite bright and he gets a scholarship and he goes to Germany and it's where he's, uh, like largely educated as he grows up. And you, you get this like level of arrogance from him in the beginning where you're like, Oh, I don't know. This guy seems like kind of a bad dude. But as he kind of gets over his like BS bravado, um, once things get really serious, you start to see much more of his humanity come out and it's, and it's harrowing. Like it really is to see somebody go through what they did. Um, and again, the, the scenes of the torture are brutal and things I didn't even know were practices that we were doing. Um, are, and, and the things that they show happening to him did happen because these are, these are things that were found to be accurate in what they called MFRs, which are memorandum for record, which is like minute by minute notes made by the U.S. military. This is not third party. It's not Slahi's like statements. These are actual notes by the military in what they did to him and other, um, and, and other prisoners in Guantanamo as far as torture is concerned. And it's, awful like it is it's just awful so um you know that's sort of a trigger warning or whatever um if you can't handle those kind of things but it is it is something to see um if i had to give it a score i'd probably go with a four out of five um especially if you if you sort of want these close to real life stories uh, especially about 9 11 um and sort of post america after that so um check out the mauritanian it is in theaters february 19th and i will see you next time you're watching the Nerdpocalypse YouTube channel. Make sure you click that button to subscribe and check out our weekly podcast where we talk about movie, TV, news, tech, and weird stories from around the internet.